load and clear, right? Walk into any space where our mother was, and you knew she was there before you laid eyes on her. Whether it was hearing her laughing, talking about politics or pan, hearing her prayers on TV, smelling her cooking, you could always feel her presence and know that Judy reached. If anybody knows the Billy Joel song, Always a Woman, it must have been written for her. When we listen to the lyrics, it's mummy in print. We will share a bit of the song and hope Billy doesn't mind. Oh, yeah. She can kill with a smile. She can wound with her eyes. And she can ruin your faith with her casual lies. She only reveals what she wants you to see. She hides like a child, but she's always a woman to me. She can lead you to love. She can take you or leave you. She can ask for the truth, but she'll never believe you. She'll take what you give her as long as it's free. She's always a woman to me. She takes care of herself. She can wait if she wants. She's ahead of her time. She never gives out and she never gives in. She just changes her mind. She'll promise you more than the Garden of Eden. Then she'll carelessly cut you and laugh while you're bleeding. But she brings out the best and the worst you can be. Blame it all on yourself, because she's always a woman to me. She's frequently kind, and she's suddenly cruel. She can do as she pleases. She's nobody's fool. And she can't be convicted. She's earned her degrees. The most she will do is throw shadows at you, but she's always a woman to me. Mommy was tender and loving, boisterous and feverish, cool yet calculated. She was like the Marines. You had no better friend and no worse enemy. With her on your side, you could not lose. But as her opposition, I feel sorry for you. Mom attended Providence Girls where she excelled academically while fostering lifelong friendships with many of our aunties. Her friends remember that she would finish her schoolwork quickly and then turn around to chat and distract them. They lovingly remember her as having the ability to talk her way out of any situation and a smile that could soften your heart. She continued to thrive academically and her unique combination of natural charm, determination, and zeal for equity and justice led her to the study of law. She received her law degree from the University of West Indies her LLM specializing in environmental law from Tufts University in Boston, and recently completed another master's in conflict resolution. She was a truly gifted and driven individual to make her parents, family, and fellow countrymen proud. Mommy saw the importance of preserving the environment long before it became the cool thing to do. She had a robust passion for protecting small islands in the Caribbean. She became a pioneer in environmental law for the region, understanding the balance between development and its impact on the environment, but doing so responsibly. She was associated with regional and international projects of the UN, PAHO, the World Bank, IADB, CARICOM, SEHI, CARICAD, NEDCO, and GWPC among others with several regional governments in key environmental areas that included drafting laws on pollution control, environmental health, conservation of natural resources and waste management laws. Coincidentally, today just so happens to be Earth Day. While traveling and attended all of these conferences and meeting heads of state, we were always her top priority. She cooked meals ahead of time and made a schedule Thursday, fettuccine and shrimp, Friday, curry chicken. She kept track of all our grades and teachers and was somehow at our swim meets, 
parent-teacher meetings, football games, piano recitals, band performances, tennis matches, you name it. She balanced all of these things as a single parent. Mommy was truly phenomenal. Her friends and family all knew her to argue intelligibly, intelligibly, in, excuse me, intelligent, what a, word, what a word to stumble on, intelligibly, intelligibly, <laughs> and fiercely on various topics from cricket and football to politics and of course judging steel pan where Despers was always the better band. Mommy's strong faith, determination, and resilience was shown in her approach to being diagnosed with the most aggressive form of multiple myeloma. She treated it like the common cold. When she first told us about the cancer, we asked, how long? And she said, no, no, it's not like that. Just have to take a little medicine. She continued to assure us that God was in control. You never really would know what she was going through. She'd be out getting groceries, decorating the house, cooking every day, dancing, gardening, and planning all kinds of events and loving life. Mommy somehow had the ability to spend time with everyone, whether it was gardening with her sister Jenny, going for doubles with her brother Sean, doing some kind of minor renovation with her brother Stevie, and of course going for ice cream with anybody who made the slightest mention. Her extended family in Sangre Grande knew where she, when she was in town because she found a way to see them or at least call and make sure to stay in the loop. Her friends spoke about how she enjoyed hosting and would make every small get-together a wonderful experience where every detail was thought of. She loved seeing people enjoy themselves. While we know mom to be a strong person who would do anything for you, there are many stories that highlight her belief in self-preservation or at times when she would say, you see me, I gone. Granny can tell you about when mom was teaching her how to drive in Lavin's Hill. There's a hill near the playground and granny got nervous and lost control of the car coming down the hill. Well, with that, mommy quickly jumped out of the car and granny ended up in a ditch. When granny was finally rescued, she met mommy sitting outside, perched on a wall with her legs crossed like nothing happened. <laughs> David and I knew this side of her all too well. If we heard a noise, she would direct us to go and see what is that, as she stayed behind closed doors. We would come to mom with our problems and she would just choose, coolly dismissing our fears and instead devising her own easy strategy. In the moment, you'd be too vexed to listen and later, vexed to admit she was right. She would say, trust your mother, as we rolled our eyes. Mom fought tooth and nail to get what she wanted. I remember being waitlisted for Mercer Law and I was very disappointed and didn't want to share it with her. When I told her, she said, why you didn't tell me? The next day she was on the phone with Mercer Admissions and even got to speak to the president of the law school. By the time they were offering scholarships. I then got accepted to FSU and mom was all too pleased to turn down their offers. She said, good, they were too fast to say no. Mommy could care about you at times more than you did your own self. She took our dreams and passions so personally that you had to be sure about your plans before you told her. After that, she wouldn't settle for you trying to achieve them at less than 100% and would literally begin charting your success. This might sound good, but imagine trying to change your mind. Her niece and nephews talk of how they were inspired by her accomplishments and how it drove them to be successful. She was strict on them about her schoolwork and was so proud to see them all succeed. They had to share report cards with her and nobody wanted to hear Auntie Judy's mouth if they were not up to par. They strove to make her proud. She saw them as her own children and they knew that their second mom was there to support and defend them at any time. In their eyes, Auntie Judy was always full of love and excitement and serious determination, yet somehow still cool enough to share Margarita and a cosmopolitan. Although mom split her time between Trinidad and Atlanta, her heart was always 100% in Trinidad and Tobago. As one of her friends aptly recalled, she felt blessed and humbled to be a Trinidadian when she considered the uniqueness talent and beauty that came from this little island of paradise. She loved Juve morning and going to Panorama with her friends, brothers, sister, and sometimes either me or David when we could come down for carnival. 
She was always touched on Ash Wednesday when the streets that were just filled with masqueraders and paint and music were suddenly clean with no trace of the previous events. She always said it showed that in Trinidad we still revere God. Mom, we want you to rest easy, knowing that we will continue to strive for excellence. We will take chances and give our all to achieve our heart's desire. We will remain close, just as you insisted. Like you said, we're a small family. We know you didn't leave us on purpose. You just had an important meeting to attend with God. You are here with us always in spirit, so in this, some ways, this is better. Mommy would say to all of us today, trust in the Lord. Walking into this space, I know all mom's spirit is, is in here. I see it in your tears and in your smiling faces. I hear it in the stories that have been shared with us. I know that while she resides with her father in heaven, she will always be a part of us. So that whenever we all get together and remember her, we know Judy Reach. Judy Reach. morning. Quite recently, I overheard an oldie, goodbye girl, and the refrain struck me as being most apt for this tribute to Judy, our most esteemed and beloved deputy chair at the Environmental Management Authority, the EME. And these were the words that resonated so loudly. Goodbye doesn't mean forever. Let me tell you, goodbye doesn't mean we'll never be together again. Wish I could have sung that, but I'm sure you all wouldn't have wanted to hear. I could not help but recall that during Judy's five years at the EME, she would be traversing regularly between her two homes, Atlanta and Trinidad and that our many goodbyes were always transient. For it was with a certainty that we would be greeted, graced by her presence at our board meetings and any other obligations will be fulfilled. Such was her devotion to duty as she embraced her role with utmost seriousness and professionalism engaging with us up to a week before her unexpected passing and promising to be back soon. Alas, on February 24th, our last goodbye did turn out to be forever here on this earthly realm. But as the lyricist wrote, and as our faith endures, there is hope that we meet again. I offer this tribute on behalf of the board, management, and staff of the EME. And it is profound that her final rites are occurring today, as David said, on World Earth Day 2022, with the team invest in our planet. For Judy certainly invested in the EME, as the sentiments I'm about to share reflective of our collective thoughts, illustrate the impact that Judy made during her tenure. We have lost one of us, an invaluable member of our family. The sadness is profound. So these are from all of the members. Um, I'm just reading what they um, you know, um, put on our WhatsApp group when we got the news. 
Judy was heavy on my heart when I heard she was hospitalized. I'm comforted that we all had the opportunity to pray for her and to keep her in our thoughts. I know what a difficult time this is for her family and my heart goes out to them. We will mourn her loss. The shock was too much to bear and I have no words for this. It is so very sad. I am truly glad to have had the privilege to have met her and to have shared some moments with her in this journey of life. She is now beyond this place of wrath and tears. And may we and her family find solace in her memories. We will smile and celebrate her even while we grieve. Judy was a multifaceted person who moved easily from the professional with a passion for our environment to the colleague who loved to tease, laugh infectiously, and engage with us all. The side that we saw and that I valued the most was the woman who valued family above all. We shared her grief during the sad time as she grieved for her father and we prayed together. We embraced her joy on the addition of a beloved daughter-in-law to the family. And that joy was completed when she could proudly claim the title of grandmother. It was in these fleeting moments that we had the good fortune to encounter this fascinating person who had so much capacity to love. While these reflections offer a glimpse into our relationship with Judy and what she meant to us, there is so much more to share. And I know her friends and family will enjoy a few more recollections. How did we describe this gem of a person? We were unanimous that she who had the ultimate Jodhavi, joy of living. She took such pleasure in being part of the EME and her fondness for Trinidad's cuisine, curry especially, and the chocolates lightened the seriousness of our business. As one member reminisced, I myself don't eat chocolates, but always took a share when a good Samaritan brought so that I could give mine to Judy. She could be quite the instigator too. And I recall a few times, thankfully, when a certain member or two would be trying their best to disassociate from her attempts to carry on conversations during our meetings, lest they earn the, lest they earn the censure of the chair, you, yours truly. But that is forgiven because she probably realized that some respite was needed for my droning at that time. That aside, when it came to her work and responsibilities, she was the ultimate professional and respectful of good governance practices. She was renowned in her discipline of environmental law, honed over many years of practice and learning. The EMA was truly fortunate to have her expertise in the short span of five years. But her contributions will be a lasting legacy. Judy's last undertaking in her capacity as chair of our technical advisory committee was oversight for the drafting of the environmental code. And fortunately for the EME, she was able to give her stamp of approval on this seminal piece of work. This, the country stands to benefit from this environmental code as we strive towards sustainable development and her contributions will not be in vain. On behalf of the EME, I express our heartfelt gratitude for the human service given by Judy as our Deputy Chair, Trustee, Chair of the Technical Advisory Committee, member of other committees, trusted colleague and faithful friend. Some of, some of us were fortunate to have known her for over three decades, as is the case with Gordon and myself, while others intersected with her for shorter periods, but she still managed to leave an indelible mark on all. We, commiss we commiserate with those nearest and dearest to you, Judy, during these darkest of times. 
but we must comprehend that you have done your work here on earth and it is time for you to rest in peace with eternal optimism that goodbye doesn't mean forever. Tribute, tribute to Ms. Judy Daniel, former Chair of Global Water Partnership and Chair of Regional Chairs. Service above self. The tribute is being read on behalf of Trevor Thompson, the Chair of Global Water Partnership Caribbean. I first met Judy in 2004 when stakeholders from across the region gathered for a series of meetings to look at establishing a regional organization focused on water, making it a prominent agenda item that required the highest political and social support and attention. Judy was of course sitting in the midst of the discussions, observing and making her contributions in her quiet yet authoritative voice. She loved a good, intelligent discussion, but she was always solution-oriented. I observed that she was in the midst of all the statutes, principles, and legal drafting to ensure that we got it right. She had that gift of discernment that caused her to know when something was good and when it was not worth pursuing. From those early days, our friendship grew as we continued to meet infrequently at regional meetings. We were both involved in the meetings that were organized to draft the OECS model water policies and draft legislation upon which many of the island's water governance is based. As you can imagine, this was fulfilled with debates and differences of opinions, but I believe in the end she got it right. When I became chair of GWPC, because of the leadership and negotiating skills I solicited for support to undertake some special projects and eventually convince her to stand as a candidate to be elected to the GWP Caribbean Steering Committee. This followed with the Steering Committee's endorsement to serve on the GWPO Global Steering Committee because we realized Judy had great experience knowledge and the necessary technical capacity to function at a global level. When my term as the chair, as chair came to an end, Judy, because of her commitment, became the chair of GWP Caribbean. And this was followed by her becoming the first female chair of regional chairs of GWPO. While serving at a global level, she was instrumental in moving the water agenda forward on a global stage. Water is now on the agenda of the UNFCCC climate change and UNCCD desertification negotiations. To me, Judy was a true Caribbean patriot, a champion for integrated water resources management and the environment. Her passion for what she was committed to was infectious which resulted in her laboring to lay the foundation so that many of our islands can have IWRM plans, national water policies, and draft water legislation that many are building upon. Judy was a trendsetter and a pace setter. She was different, she was determined to make her mark in history, and I believe she has. She has set the bar extremely high for others to follow 
and has positioned the Caribbean at the center of the global water agenda. Her tenacity, fighting spirit, and determination to succeed was always present as a source of inspiration to others when they felt to quit or give up. Judy was a prayer warrior. Prayer was her livelihood. Many of you may not know, but we spent a lot of time praying when her daughter was sick. She called and we prayed for her recovery and in faith believed that she will be restored to perfect health. When she was not feeling well, her first resort was to turn to God in prayer. When there were battles, troubles, and oppositions to overcome, prayer was her weapon. She had the spirit of a lioness, brave, fearless, determined. Judy has left us a legacy of love for people, perseverance in the face of adversity, and fighting with all your strength until the task is finished. She died on the battlefield, fighting for Caribbean water security. Her legacy will be an instrument, sorry, an inspiration to many that will follow in her footsteps and stand upon her shoulders in the years to come. Godspeed, Judy. Your task is over. Rest well. The tribute was on behalf of Trevor Thompson, GWP Caribbean Chair, and the GWPC Secretariat. We now have a video. Um, it presents a summary. Judy's contribution to GWPC over the last years, ending in 2019 when her tenure on the steering committee ended. Um, so it's a short video of three minutes. Judy Daniel, I am the chair of GWPC and I was recently elected a chair of chairs for GWP. So in, with regard to our interest here particularly, it's on the development side, water security and food for us um, and, in, and in particularly involving youth and, and gender. but I'm going to roll up my sleeves as an indication of the approach that I would like us to take today. Chair of UN Water has put it, do what you can, do it with others, do it with passion, and I will add, do it as if your life depends on it, because life depends on water.
for her outstanding contribution to Global Water Partnership Caribbean. We have this plaque in honor of Judy Daniel to present to her children. Judy was a former Global Water Partnership Caribbean chair, the former GWP chair of regional chairs, and our steering committee member. At the time of her passing, she was still a member of our technical committee. In honor and appreciation of her invaluable leadership, service, passion, and commitment to the organization in championing the vision of a water secure Caribbean, we present the plaque to her kids. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the angels and saints of God receive our sister Judy Daniel into the heavenly city of the new Jerusalem. We bless her body with holy water which recalls her baptism. Christ died and rose to life. May our sister Judy Daniel now enter 
into the joy of the Lord. Amen. sisters and welcome to St. Mary's as we mourn the death of our dear sister Judy Daniel and celebrate the promise of eternal life. At the very outset I say my deepest condolences to the family members as we pray God today you may find consolation in the message of the resurrection and the great life that Judy lived and pray God today she may now enjoy everlasting rest and peace. I invite you now to bow your heads in prayer. O oh God, go through the ending of present things, open up the beginning of things to come. Grant we pray that the soul of your servant Judy Daniel may be led by you to attain the inheritance of eternal redemption. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We now sit for first reading. Are full of confidence, I say, and actually 
want to be exiled from the one and make our home with the Lord. Whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him. For all the truth about us will be brought out to the Lord, court of Christ, and each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body, good or bad. The word of the Lord. Spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was very early in the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that a stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following now, came up, went right into the tomb. So the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth had been covered over his head. This was not with the linen cloths rolled up in the place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, dear friends. We have gathered here at St. Mary's to pay our last respects, lead to rest, the mortal remains of our dear friend and sister, uh, Judy Daniel. I recall when I first met uh, Judy, I was just a dean priest and assigned to the cathedral as an associate. And I have a vivid recollection, I was celebrating the 9 a.m. Mass. And after Mass, Jean, Judy's mom, member of the choir, was at the back of the sanctuary, the altar, and said to me, Father Manny, I want you to meet my daughter. So here was Judy, her daughter, sitting next to her. And then, of course, the mom said to me, um, uh, you know, pray for her, she has exams coming up soon. So I looked at her and said, um, are you doing A-levels? <laughs> well, of course not. She, I think, was second year law school, or first year, I can't remember which one. But she looked like 15 or 16 to me at that time, anyhow. And then, of course, we spoke for a few minutes and I went off. I remember a couple of weeks later, I got a call from Judy. It was a Friday morning, I remember, reading cats and dogs. And it was, it was before nine o'clock, maybe wrong, after eight or so. And she said to me on the phone, do you want to do a good deed today? <laughs> a good deed. She says, I have school, I have classes, and it's reading cats and dogs. I can't get to school. Would you mind giving me a lift, you know? <laughs> And I remember, so of course I, have, I can do that. I remember taking Judy to, to, to law school for classes there. And the rest is history. Got to know the family very well. And for many years, we were part of the celebrations and functions, good times and, and bad times. Little did I know that, you know, you could never predict life. That one day, many years later, I'll be presiding at a funeral. Life is so uncertain, so unpredictable. This morning, dear friends, you know, to share with you a couple of thoughts. As we reflect and pray for the repose of a soul. Many of us, I'm sure, are familiar with the story 
of Zoba the Greek. Zoba the Greek. Either through Nikos Kazantikis' famous book or through the movie. Well, as you know, Zoba was not a fictional character. He was a real person, Alexis Zoba. What such a larger than life personality and energy. When he died, Chrysanthicus found his death very difficult to accept, incredulous that such energy, such verve and color were mortal. And we feel the same this morning on the passing of Judy. On learning of Zorba's death, this was the reaction of Kazantikis. He said, I closed my eyes and felt tears rolling slowly, warmly down my cheeks. He's dead, dead, dead. Zorba is gone, gone forever. The laughter is dead. The song cut off. The city broken. The dance on the sea side pebbles has halted. The insatiable mouth that question with such incurable thirst is filled now with clay. Such souls should not die. Will earth, water, fire, and chance ever be able to fashion Isoba again? It was though I, that I believed him to be immortal. This morning we asked the said question. Will earth, water, fire, and chance ever be able to fashion Judy Daniel again. Sometimes, my dear friends, sometimes it is hard to believe that a certain person can die because of the life and energy that he or she incarnated. We simply cannot imagine that life pulse dead, forever gone from this planet. Certain people seem exempt from death because why we cannot imagine such energy, such color, generosity, and goodness dying. How can such wonderful energy just die? How can Judy die? It was only a few months ago, Judy was here, delivering the tribute and eulogy on the first anniversary of her father's passing. I remember when her father died, she was away. And she, was, she had prepared, the, she had prepared the, 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 the eulogy to be delivered, could be here. So she called me in the morning, I think it was a little before seven o'clock. I said, Manny, I need your help. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the printer at home, wherever, was done. So I want to send you the eulogy so you can get it, you can get it to the family. But well, they're doing that as the last probably act she had asked me to do. So we asked the question, how can Judy die? My friends, I have felt many times especially in the last two years during the pandemic, the lockdown. You know, I've seen many friends, many colleagues, people especially spirited, colorful, witty, generous men and women who died. Last year alone, we did 133 funerals here at St. Mary's. 
colleges. So, what can I say? So, Bartos Kazantikis came to mind and he struggled to accept Zoba's death. Along the way, he tried to deal with that death, as we try now to deal with the death of Judy. What did he do, Kazantikis? He would try to resurrect Zoba, bring him back to life by taking his story to the world in such a way as to transform his life into a myth, into a dance, and into a religion. I'm sure right now we are saying to ourselves, how can we resurrect Judy? But Kazantikis believed this is what Mary Magdala did in the wake of Jesus' death. When she left his tomb and went back to the world, she resurrected Jesus by telling his story, creating a myth, a dance in a religion. So in the wake of Zorba's death, Kazantikis said to himself, let us give him our blood so he can be brought back to life. And we are saying the same today. Let's give her her blood so she can come back to life. Let us do what we can to make this wonderful, extraordinary person, you know, live a little longer. So while we, while we bless the effort of Kazantikis, he made a great story, yes. He made a great story. But Mary Magdala had something else in mind. She had something else in mind. Nonetheless, my friends, there is still something to be learned from the story coming from Nico Kazantikis. Something we can learn about how to deal with a death that seemingly takes some energy out of the planet. How do we do that? Because we must not let that wonderful energy disappear. We must keep it alive. We must keep Judy's energy alive and spirit alive. But as Christians, we do this in a different way. So we read the Mary Magdala story quite differently. Mary went to Jesus' tomb. She found it empty. And she went away crying. But we should, before she got to tell anyone any story, she met a resurrected Jesus who shared with her how his energy, his color, his love and person would now be found. And that is in a radically new mode, in a radically new modality inside his spirit. And my dear friends, that contains the secret of how we are to give life to our loved one, Judy, who has died. How do we keep our loved ones and the wonderful energy they brought to this world, to this planet, alive when they have died? How do we keep the wonderful energy of Judy alive? That's a very important and pertinent question we must ask ourselves here this morning at St. Mary's. And first of all, my friends, by recognizing that her energy doesn't die with her body. That it does not depart this world. Her energy remains alive, still with us, 
but now inside us through the spirit it leaves behind just as Jesus left his spirit behind and further still my friends her energy infuses us whenever we enter into her Galilee Galilee quote unquote that is where we enter into those places where her spirit thrived and breathe out generative oxygen the environment my view is that Judy was a family person you know fiercely committed to her family you know I remember as a person committed to her family her siblings parents grandparents aunt uncle from wherever committed deeply to her family what is someone's Galilee a person's Galilee is that special energy that special oxygen which he or she breathes out for Zorba it was his fiercest and zest for life for Judy as I said before her family you know commitment to her work the environment friendships believe in her God she was integral to her faith was very important to her so whenever we go to those places where the spirits breathe out God's life we breathe in again the oxygen they dance their life when we involve in the protection the preservation of the environment we are committed to family life friendship solidarity we breathe in again her oxygen her dance her life and like all of you my friends like all of you I have sometimes been stunned saddened at the death of a certain person how could that special energy just die and sometimes that special energy was manifest you know sometimes in physical beauty in human grace in fearlessness in color in moral steadfastness you know compassion graciousness warmth wit or humor it can be very hard to accept that beauty and life giving oxygen can seemingly leave this world leave this planet but in the end in the end my dear friends nothing is lost in the end nothing is lost sometime in God's time at the right time the stone will roll back and like Mary of Magdala walking away from the grave we will know that we can breathe in that wonderful energy again in Galilee eternal rest grant unto Judy O Lord may your soul rest in peace may the soul of the faithfully parted through the mercy of God rest in peace Amen stand God your mighty father is Christ his son from the dead with confidence we ask him to save all his people living and dead for duty in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life as you know be admitted to the company of the saints Lord hear us. Lord, Lord, our sister Judy, we the body of Christ, the bread of life. 
shall be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. For we see relatives and friends, you know, for our deceased brother, uh, Selwyn, for our father, and for all that helped, you know, helped us, that they may have the reward of your goodness. Lord, hear us. We pray for our family members this morning, her mom, Jean, her siblings, children who are here, friends. That they may find consolation in the grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. We also pray that this United Nations World Earth Day will encourage us to fulfill its theme, invest in our world, so that a safe environment will protect the lives of all people. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here this morning, worship in faith, we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. And now in the silence of your hearts, I invite you to pray for your personal intentions. Lord, hear us. And God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister, Judy Daniel. Cleanse her of her sins and grant her the fullness of redemption. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can you sit now, my dear friends, and the collection will be taken up for our building fund here at St. Mary's. Thank you. Sisters, my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on the offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Judy 
may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is we right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, that we might all escape from dying, as one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy therefore the gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, he be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Judy Daniel, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and the sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Lord, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We now bow or wave to each other as a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Christ, body of Christ, 
body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ.
My dear friends, I have a suggestion that you plant a tree in memory of Judy. I believe a tree planted in someone's memory is a very fitting tribute that benefits present and future generations and perhaps a very fitting memorial gift. Especially this day and a commitment to the environment. Please stand. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant we pray, O Lord, that your servant Judy Daniel, for whom you have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. We now come to the final commendation. Once again, I will sprinkle Judy's body with holy water, which we call a baptism. And through baptism, her body became the temple of the Holy Spirit. And as a sign and reverence of that fact, with an incense, her body, as the incense rises, we ask Almighty God to receive our prayers on Judy's behalf. Lord, we commend the soul of Judy, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. 
Forgive whatever sin she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Because God has chosen to call our sister from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. Jesus Christ will change your mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen the firstborn from the dead. So we commend our sister Judy to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful, and you attend to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May the peace of God, which is beyond our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I invite you, dear friends, please extend your right hand to the casket that carries the body of Judy. Judy Daniel, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham and where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. My dear friends, the funeral mass for their sister Judy Daniel is now ended. Go now in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord with your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep him good so far on yourself. Take care. Walk with me, O oh my Lord, through the darkest night and brightest day. Be at my side, O oh Lord.
think religion is from a Catholic and that's religion. How do you get back to be a Catholic? Did the priest make a good actual contrition? Do the actual contrition with the priest and, and good actual contrition, good confession? To do here to tell you that every time. <laughs> Thank you.
Small eyes. 